Um, so I am super excited to introduce um, Sylvia and Lilith from Ludwigsburg University of Education. Now, um, Lilith is um, working with Sylvia um, and they've recently published some really nice work on self-concept and science capital. And um, um, both Sylvia and Lilith are, are leading chemistry education research in Europe. And I've known Sylvia um, for quite a number of years now um, through her involvement in many science education and chemistry education projects in Europe. So Sylvia has also, um, his, she, she's been involved in many projects on, on the linguistics um, dimension of, of chemistry education research and how that um, can inform um, chemistry teacher development. So today um, they both will be sharing some of the work um, that they've done on chemistry students science capital and science capital is underpinned um, by the sociological the um, theorist Pierre Bourdieu um, and this is a really fascinating um, theory that I think will have a lot of implications to chemistry education research. So I will now stop sharing and invite um, Sylvia to share her screen and take us through her, her work on science capital. Okay, perfect. I just want to check, Lilith, you're there as well, right? Yeah, I'm there. <laughs> okay, <laughs> good. Awesome. I'm going to put my camera on as well. So, um, okay, so let me start to, oh, sorry, to share my screen with you guys. Um, yeah. So um, first of all, thank you so much for having us here, for inviting us. It is really exciting. And this is, to be honest, for both of us, the first time to do the conference online, uh, but we're going to try to do our best. Uh, as read in the emails before, um, from our side, it's really okay if you take a picture of the, of the screen and put it on Twitter. We are really fine with that. And just to give you small information, the first part is going to be like more us talking and then the second part of our talk is going to be more like you working in the breakout rooms. Um, so what we decided to do today for our talk is actually to take you on a, on a journey that we did for a long time actually now because Lilith and, my, and uh, myself we worked together for a longer time. She was my student uh, in, in at the University of Bremen and then um, she accepted to come with me to look at, to be my PhD student so we can uh, work together on this topic. So why we actually started to do something like this? The first part is because I'm a student with migration background. So I came to Germany when I was 16 and somehow I did notice that there is something different, that there is something not as I was used to that it, that is, it is in the school, but I was not really sure because, you know, that time at 16, you're kind of like, just try to reflect, but you cannot really always find the reason and put it on point. So we started to do a research as um, Ashling already said, I was, I'm working on linguistic heterogeneity in science classes. And I was also seeing like a next close things to this is culture as well. So we were starting to, to work on this topic and this is also one part that Lilith was doing in her master thesis. So how we started actually, we asked ourselves why are there differences and when it comes to self-concept, why and where are the differences actually when we we're talking about that. So just to warm up, like to have a start up, I would like you to go to this page. I'm going to also put this link in the chat so you can just um, connect to that. And there's a, like a short questionnaire with the result. So you're going to see like how this tool is going to describe your um, self-concept. So let me just put this in the chat. Um. Okay. Mm. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm there. Okay, now you have to have it, I think. So I think you need about like maybe two minutes time, three more. We're getting an error when we click through to that link. Okay, I'm gonna try. 
I'm going to try it again then. Okay, with the huger one, sorry. The QR code on your slide did work. Okay. That was fine. Yep. Sylvia, are we supposed to just answer the question or are we also supposed to do the second page? Oh, when you go to the second page, you just then have the results. Oh, okay. Thanks. Yeah. Um, okay, I didn't understand this, what I was saying. Sorry, that was just background noise. I'm muted now. Okay. Okay, this is just, you know, just to give you the information how we started. So this is what we did. We asked our students in secondary school in chemistry, students having different immigration background just to see how is their self-concept. So you were probably put in one of those different answers that was possible on that grant. At the end, they were standing like different descriptions. So one of those were your results. What we got from this study when we started is that there's different self-concept that our students are having, which is not new. But the other point that we noticed is that the self-concept of the students is really strong related to their culture, to their immigration background, and to their gender. For example, German group of students, it's kind of like stereotypical. So that means that boys, they're having more stronger self-concept, are more confident and saying, yes, I'm good in chemistry, I can do that and the girls are having lower self-concept. The group of students that we're also testing or asked about in this questionnaire was the Turkish group of students. Here, the, the results were completely different. The girls were more self-confident. They're more having, they're having a stronger self-concept about them being chemist or being in chemistry class comparing to the boys. So it's actually just the opposite that what was happening in um, our German group. So this is actually when we started to ask ourselves, well, okay, now we have the results, but first, what to do with this? And the second, why is it like this? Like, why, what is happening? Why is this group of students different so much and depending on gender and on their culture or migration background comparing to the other group of students? So this is where we started to think about what is the background and what we can use as a theory. Lilith? Yeah, so, um what was interesting in this pilot study was that we conducted all the research in Germany um, with students uh, who spent most of their, um, their lives in Germany, um, but they had different cultural backgrounds. And we didn't know how to explain this, how, uh, how students living in the same country could have uh, such uh, yeah, different uh, influences from their cultural backgrounds. And um, so, um, we asked ourselves, how could we explain this? And our hypothesis was that uh, the home environment could play a big role because um, we put, suppose that the students um, experience the, the cultural background and the cultural influence mostly in their home environments and in their families. So we, we sought for, um, for a theoretical framework that could help us to conceptualize um, this transmission of cultural influences from the parents and from the families to the students' um, chemistry capital and um, chemistry self-concepts. And uh, for this, we, we chose the um, sociological approach by Pierre Bourdieu. And um, Bourdieu wanted to understand how social inequalities are um, made and maintained um, between uh, over generations. So, um, 
he developed a very um, nuanced notion of uh, capital, which is not only the capital like money and property, but there, he says that there is also different types of capital that can also be transmitted from one generation to the other. So apart from uh, property and money, you also have cultural capital. And cultural capital is something like uh, feelings, thoughts, uh, attitudes towards things, and um, ways of behaving. And these things are also transmitted in families. Um, and on the other hand, you also have social capital that you can inherit and that you can transmit from one generation to the other. Uh, social capital would be something like your social connections, your social network. So there's much more in, into play than only money that you inherit from parents. So this is his argument. And um, Archer and colleagues who uh, defined the notion of science capital, um, they um, adapted um, the research of uh, Pierre Bourdieu and their argument is that nowadays um, the field of science and technology has gained a lot of importance in social distinctions. So um, they try to analyze what kinds of capital are relevant in the field of science and technology today and that uh, make social distinctions. And also they, uh, they try to find out which forms of capital, of science capital are available, but they are not valued in the field of science. So which types of capital do have exchange value and which types do not have exchange value. So we did thought this, um, this could be interesting for our research, for understanding uh, the cultural differences in chemistry self-concept because uh, it just touches this, these relations um, between um, the families and the students. And we wanted to find out um, how these transmissions of capital can be conceptualized for the field of chemistry and for chemistry education. Yeah, good. <laughs> <laughs> um, so starting from here, we wanted to answer for us the following research question. So how does school to contribute to students' um, acquisition of chemistry capital? How does chemistry capital in the home environment contribute to students' individual chemistry capital? And what individual strategies do students employ for acquiring chemistry capital? So um, we get to the schools and try to collect as many data as we could. And um, this is the, the study that is based on the interview. So we collected our data in three different type of schools that we are having here in Germany. So we have gymnasium, it's a grammar school, it's like high achiever school, let's say. Those are mainly students that are also visiting university after they finish grammar school. Then Realschule or middle ability group uh, of students is going there. And um, high, and Hauptschule, this is like low achiever school, we can say. Um, so we have students from all different schools uh, kind of you know, it was not so easy to, to get the permissions in our federal state to ask uh, the students, but um, yeah, we were, we we're pretty doing well, I think. So the approach, what we did with that semi-structured interview on the left side of the screen, you see the main questions that we ask all of the students, for example, uh, what comes to your mind when you think about the chemistry on the afternoon at home? What role does chemistry play? What role could chemistry play in your life after you finish school? And so on and so on. So it's just, you know, just to give you some hints um, how the questions will look like. And the questions that you're seeing on the um, right side of the screen, sorry, I have problems with left and right, uh, are the questions that we ask, that Lilith asked actually when she was, um, looking for more clarification um, when the students were giving answers to the main questions. So collecting those questions, of course, the first part that we have to do, the next step is actually to analyze the data and um, Lilith is going to take you through this. Yeah, so for me, um, analyzing the interview data was quite an adventure, I must say, because I didn't have so much experience in qualitative data analysis. And also, um, I think that developing a new concept and conceptuali conceptualizing things is uh, quite demanding. So um, in the first step, uh, we had to find uh, a general approach for the analysis. And we wanted it to be less open than grounded theory because, of course, there was already um, the Bourdieu's theory at hand and we also had uh, science capital research. So there was 
already a theoretical basis. But on the other hand, we wanted it to be less uh, content focused and uh, less strict, I would say, than, for example, qualitative data, uh, qualitative content analysis. Um, because I think that in capital research, it is very important not to see only the content um, of the speech, but also to look at the things that are uh, unsaid. So the things that people express, um, like their feelings, um, their ways of reasoning, um, and um, um, the like. So um, we decided um, to use a thematic analysis because um, um, it allows to use an existing framework. So we could use the existing framework of science capital, but also it allows to detect underlying themes. So exactly what we wanted. Okay, so, um, yeah. No, 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 uh, wait, <laughs> what is the, sorry. Go on, sorry. <laughs> so, um, but this was only, the thematic analysis can only be the general frame. And uh, for me as a researcher, it was really important to find concrete uh, techniques of analyzing the data. So in the first step, um, the goal was to um, code the data. And for this, we use structural and process coding. Uh, and you can see in the in this picture below uh, some people working together and alone and me it was uh, it was mainly me on the left side organizing the data trying to uh, to code the data but we, at several instances we met in a team and discussed the work so um, the team was composed of Sylvia me and we had an, another um, science education researcher from a different uh, with a different background and uh, uh, a science teacher who participated in these discussions. And I think especially in qualitative da data analysis, it is very important and enriching to, um, to look at the data from different perspectives. And um, yeah, just to, to, to go beyond your own yeah. um, mindset. And at least for me, it was very, a very enriching experience. Okay, next slide. Okay. <laughs> Good. Um, so after having coded the data, the second step was uh, to understand the individual causal relations. Um, so we wanted to find out how chemistry capital at home and how school factors are related to a student's individual chemistry capital. So all the links between, between the, the family background and the student's individual chemistry capital. And for this, uh, we used the technique of uh, building um, causal um, networks. So for each uh, individual interview, we, we drew uh, um, a chart, like a causal network, and we did a case description, just to, to understand what is going on in this um, particular case. Okay, next slide. Thank you, Sylvia. <laughs> um, yeah, and then in the last phase, uh, we tried to find uh, the analytical story. So what is the pattern behind all the cases together? And um, for this, we used the, the technique of pattern coding. Um, and there you can see a picture uh, from our former office. Uh, it looks a bit chaotic, but um, it was one way of making sense of the data. So uh, on, the, on the sheets of paper, um, each sheet, sheet of paper stands for one student. So on each sheet of paper, you have an individual causal network. Um, and the, the case description. And I, uh, I try to stick all the, all the, the papers on the, on the shelf just to, to try to find a pattern, to find groups that are similar or um, to find a logic behind the things. And um, yeah, just to, to, to organize the, the data. Um, and sticking these papers on the wall was not the only, uh, it, it didn't give me the solution, the perfect solution, but it was one step in this whole phase of pattern coding that helped me to organize the material, to reorganize it, to reorganize it again, and so on. So um, to try to further understand the big picture. Okay. Mm -hmm. just, just a short story about this phase of analysis of the data. This is actually the phase when our office was not really having such a fresh air because we were not really yeah, we didn't want to open the windows and to have all the construction done at the end of the day and don't have any data connected. So yeah, but it was really interesting to do so. So what actually came out, the results, you know, from the publication. So I would not really go into explaining the single uh, picture or the single pattern that we developed. So 
you saw one of those pictures. This is like um, those students uh, that the parents are having like a big uh, chemistry capital from home or the students are bringing it from home. Um, this is general educational capital is very strong um, from home. Then this one is capital with exchange value um, that is coming from the um, home environment to the students. And this is one of the um, um, of patterns when it comes to absence of chemistry with exchange value when it comes to the home environment. So as I mentioned, I'm not going to go through all those four patterns because you know this um, from, the, from the publication that um, I hope you read in the last uh, days. But what I would like to um, show you, or the, what we were thinking what could be maybe helpful, especially maybe for, for those of um, you guys that are in the phase of the PhD in the moment, or just starting to be a PhD or something like that. Um, so what we did is now I'm gonna stop to share the slide. No, I'm gonna go with the slides actually. And then uh, we can go to the breakout room. So this is actually the next phase. The first, what I would like to do with you and what we would like to do with you, I'm also going to send the questions and the link um, again in the chat is um, when you go to this um, link, you're going to find the uh, quotations from the interviews also that we matched to the four, um, four groups that we did develop. I also, you're going to see another interviews that we didn't give you like how we um, actually analyze that. And first we would like to uh, we would like you to go in the group through those um, short parts of the interview. It, we're not able, of course, to give you the whole interviews and try to think about in which of those four patterns or, or um, does it match. So this would be the first uh, topic for the group discussion or the, for the breakout rooms. And the second one is actually the questions that I was um, saying at the beginning. So we decided, to, we decided to look about the background, why are those differences when it comes to self-concept? But then we were also thinking like, okay, what now? So we have those information. So we were thinking like, what could be the practical implication for the teachers? Or what practical implications especially do you see for our policymakers? Or how does the school system in your country, so maybe this is something that is German specific, let's say, uh, deal with students, different type of capital at home. Do you have any information about this as well? Um, and also if you have other ideas. So for this part, we develop or we made one Padlet. I'm also going to give this, um, all the information in chat for you so you can also go on this. So we were thinking about like 20 to yeah, like about 20, 25 minutes uh, to go into this. Then I would say, Ma Michael, when we can go back just to sh take a short look to the Padlet and then also go to the coffee break. So I'm going to put everything in the chat so you do have information on this. Um, so we want to now assign people to breakout rooms. Of a yeah, that would be good. I think that would be good. Yes, perfect. Thank you. Let me just do my maths again. Yeah. Okay. Um, too early in the morning. Right, 28. So um, I'll let you paste into the chat first so people can grab it. Okay. Um, I want to recreate rooms. So we can go next Okay, up. so this is the. So, I'm, sorry, I'm just so uh, slow at the moment. I'm very sorry. Sorry. <laughs> So this is like for the first, um, the, um, I don't know now why, why is it two times, sorry for that. And this is the, for the discussion. And I'm also gonna put you um, the Padlet link there as well. Just, just to say the slides are also on the MISO website where the program is, so okay. we need to link out to those slides. Um, just go to the master website. Um, okay, perfect. So now I have everything in the chat. So thanks. Mm -hmm. thanks. So I'm, I'm going to uh, set the breakout room so people just join the invitation, join the room when they're ready. There'll be a new room this time. So. Okay, thank you, Michael. Thanks.
sort of people in the main room, you can just click to connect to join a room, and then I'll patrol the rooms to make sure there's nobody in a small number of rooms. Sorry, no small numbers in a room. Okay. I like your presentation. It'll be unwell. Thanks. It worked out really well. Thank you. We're, to be honest, we were not really sure, like, what to present because it's just so less time and so much to present yeah. so we would think maybe it would be interesting especially when it comes to methods so we were thinking maybe it would be interesting to present this process that Lilith did with how to you know how to deal with the data especially when you have qualitative data it's kind of different because you're not putting it into SPSS and just put the code and then you have the uh, mean scores it's a bit different yeah so mm -hmm. I think that could be interesting maybe for the guys Absolutely, the interpretivist nature, and I think the um, that um, website is so cool. The way it's set up. Oh, thanks. As opposed to just, I've never, yeah, I've never used that um, Visio before. Oh, well, it is. It isn't. It is not actually like the website uh, from like it, it's not a tool that everybody can use. This is actually a website from uh, my other PhD student. Oh. And those tools that you see, those are the tools that he, because this is a part of his PhD student, uh, PhD wow. work, he's developing those digital tools. So we ask them if he can develop one of those digital tools for today as well. Oh, very good. So actually that Visio 6, this is actually his homepage like, on his server. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> it's, so, it's so impressive, especially for the context of this, like my talk, just to take you through like, okay, these are the quotes and yeah. This, how, how you ended up at the at the different groupings as themes of capital. That's really cool. <laughs> really helpful. So we have about uh, 17 minutes in total, so I'll let you guys okay. decide. Um, you just tell yeah. me if you want to bring people back. And I can I can broadcast messages to the room as well if you like. But there are like still like a lot of people still here, like in this main room, right? Yeah, so people will have to click to join a room, so yeah. um, they may not do that, or, yeah, I'm not sure. No, but not everyone does, for, not everyone joins every breakout room. Okay. That's normal. To be honest, like I had this, like this morning also with my students, there's a group of uh, 83 students, and we were also working in breakout rooms, and then at the end, there was like always like four to five just there. And then we're like, hello, hello, do you need help? Hello. And then you see they're actually just not there. <laughs> <laughs> or like after 20 minutes, they write, then like, oh, I'm sorry, but the link did, like, there's some pop ups, and my link didn't work, or something like that. And they're like, yeah. After, after, yeah. Right? <laughs> we had a session with students last Friday on Zoom, and, and in the main room, just you know, no faces, just me and another colleague. <laughs> rooms and then they came back in the breakout rooms and all the cameras were on and then they sort of they turned them off and it's just like no I want to see some students <laughs> yeah but to be honest in the beginning the students because we, we are kind of now in the middle of semester and in the beginning the students were like so fancy and everything was so nice and now like there's one she, she really had like a snoopy pajama on on it was Tuesday 8 in the morning and I was like, I don't want to see Snoopy in the morning, <laughs> I'm sorry. And other girls, she was really, well, actually it was not supposed to, you know, the camera was not supposed to be on, but she was in the car. And then I saw her moving her cell phone and I was like, oh my God. And then I said, I, I, because I was like, oh my God, if she now has an accident or something, that's really bad. So I said, okay, you know what? I know who you are. If in five seconds you don't write me that you are like pull up right and you're standing somewhere or you're not at home, I'm going to kick you out of the Zoom meeting. I don't want you to be in the car, like driving the highway or something like that and participating in my lecture. Like, no, I'm going to kick you out. And then she wrote like, no, I'm not home. I'm not, I'm okay. I'm like, okay. That's so dangerous. Yeah. What a challenge. Okay, let's see. Teacher Child sends his best wishes to me, by the way. I, oh, I, I was speaking to him yesterday and he was like, oh, tell me, tell me. <laughs> no, I didn't hear from him like for about, I think, like a, a month or something. He, he told me that he is not allowed to move, uh, to, to leave the house and he's working in his garden. I was thinking, yeah, yeah maybe now is the time for his jam things, you know, so yes. 
conferences start so we all can have new jam actually <laughs> yeah yeah we um i i um visited him last week um because he needed some stuff and and um he has the most impre he has a really impressive garden like i think he would give michael siri a run for his garden um okay. He, he's even he's even so excited that he's growing um he's growing some grapes and they're doing pretty well so he's he's full on for not just having jam for chemistry education research people in Limerick but also wine <laughs> so <laughs> we are so there <laughs> Chaz is gonna have us sorted for the, um but yeah no his he, he has he makes the most incredible jams and yeah it's so cute he is a little label and he's like he calls them house of child's preserves yes yes i know yeah because i get i get some like every time when we're for the conference he brings me some which is oh, so nice but the problem is actually when you're just having hand luggage you know then you're like oh my god i don't know what to do with the jar <laughs> i remember one evening we were, we were like in a hotel and everybody was just eating the no way. <laughs> you know take a spoon and eat the jam <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> yeah also last year i don't i don't know if you know that last year there was that um artist final conference yeah and then peter he was like ah oh, you know what just for two days flying to georgia no way because it was it's always like overnight flight so peter yeah. and martin martin and sarah was actually supposed to come uh, but she just, you know, <laughs> noticed that she's pregnant, she cannot yeah. come. So yeah. we went actually like five days or four days before, I don't remember. We went to Georgia and was like on traveling through Georgia. You know, it was yeah. so nice. It was Yeah, did you go on a wine tour or something then? Yeah. <laughs> I was told so much because I was meant to go. Oh. Um, and I, I, I couldn't go because I had my, um, I had just started in Limerick. Oh. Um, and um, they all came back and they made me super jealous because they spent ages talking about how wonderful this pre-conference trip was. Yeah, it was and, so good. And how I missed such an amazing wine tour. Yeah, yeah, we really had, it was a really good time, yeah. Like, especially on the first day, Martin and myself, like from the flight, we were so tired. Yeah. And Peter was like, let's go see the, di like there's dinosaur foot somewhere in, in the park. <laughs> and Martin and we were like, can we just stay in the car and sleep? <laughs> <laughs> And he was like, <laughs> he I know, was, I don't know where he gets his energy from. I really don't. I have no clue. <laughs> and he was always the fastest, and you know, just yeah. yeah. It's, it's so great. Just, oh, I, I always, I always feel so, um, yeah, disappointed in myself when I'm traveling with him because he's just so, <laughs> he's such an eager beaver. Yeah, yeah, he's really good. Enthusiastic, and he never, you know. I'm just waiting. People are already. Sorry. Okay. No, I'm, I was just checking if they're already on the second part. So if there's somebody already put something in Padlet, but there's nothing in the moment, but it's okay. Yeah, do you want me to send a broadcast message to prompt them to move on or something? Yeah, maybe that would be good. So what, what should I say? Uh, like, don't forget to do the discussion or something like that. So uh, to say time to move on to discussion. Or maybe don't forget to put your results in the Padlet. Yeah, something like something that. Put like the results in Padlet. The and, and they'll know how to get the path at all the other. Um, yeah. Mm. I'll, I'll see if I can. I'm sure they can. So they have. See how that works. Okay, great. Thanks. Oh, just to let you know, I'm, I'm having now. Um, at two o'clock my time i have here like a meeting um from like with my dean and uh, president of the university it's going to take like an hour or something um oh, nothing important <laughs> that's why i have the makeup on and um and then after uh i'm gonna i think like uh for the for the uh, presentation of nicole i'm gonna be back again you know just to not that you think that i disappeared kind of yeah no, no problem at all. Oh, Ashlyn, did you have any contact like with um, uh, yes. Keelan or with Patricia? Uh, yeah, I spoke with Keelan this morning. Um, so she's just um, included me. In the oh, that's good. So we'll be rocking forward. With that. I'm really looking forward to it. It's no, because I was thinking like all the guys that was uh, that Killen was saying that is going to be at the meeting. I was like, oh, nobody's from science, so it means actually like I'm not gonna. So that's why I ask you. And then I was also thinking about Audrey. Yeah, uh, 
Yeah, because Audrey, uh, like uh, about three weeks ago, something I was um, external reviewer in one of the uh, devices that uh, was she supervised. So I was thinking like maybe it would be good there as well. And Sarah, she was like, yeah, you have to ask Ashley and Audrey as well. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Oh, no, it's, Audrey is amazing. Yeah. Yeah, she's nice. She's one of my heroes. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, response is coming in on the Padlet now. Um, I'm just checking. Are there anything? Oh yeah. Uh, um, just under nine minutes left. So if you, if you want to have this question or wrap up, just remember to it takes a minute to close the breakout rooms. Okay. Like maybe we can say like another five to six minutes, you know, so like when we we're like um, at 23 or something, so I can just have two minutes just to go uh, briefly through the, um, to the Padlet. And also I'm going to say that I can download Padlet as a PDF or something like that and also send it to Michael. So if, you know, somebody wants to have the implications as well, but this is also definitely something that is going to help um, Lilith and myself uh, to, you know, go forward because we're planning to get Lilith back at university again. <laughs> She's now doing the here in service teacher and like in, in a month. Yeah. In a month, she has her defense. Ah, <laughs> yeah, I also have to have to leave for for a while this afternoon because I'm teaching in school. So um, I will be back later then. Don't worry at all. I just have to say, hi, Sam. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, Sam. He, he wrote me that he um, he's also not here. Okay. Every time when I think about Sam, I think about such a great breakfast. <laughs> For no money. <laughs> I am also right now thinking about a great breakfast because I just rolled out of bed. Um, no, we're actually in the lunch time. Uh, <laughs> I mean, if ever there was a signature chuckle, that is, you know, that is sound. Um, <laughs> oh my God, now talking about like we have a great breakfast together, everybody could think like, oh, but no, it was just because we were too you know, not spending any money for our breakfast. So he invited us to his hotel for a breakfast. Right. So I from you one in person, there were like three people. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was such a lovely meeting. Oh, uh, that was a great time. Yeah, it was really nice. <laughs> so, um, I also check, are we sending people to breakout room for the coffee break? Um, I think we can give the, yeah, give people the option if they don't yeah, want to. Yeah. yeah. Sure. yeah. Thank you. I'm loving being the tech guy. I can go and make tea. I can just sit around. I can do nothing. <laughs> no pressure. To be honest, I was so lucky just like about two minutes before we started our talk, my um, post delivery came. So it was like my doorbell, ding! you know, I was like, just two minutes before we started. Well, Twitter has gone very quiet. So people are clearly very busy in their discussions. Okay. But it's good. Uh, this is going to be so timely as well for uh, the panel discussion that's going to happen later on um, yeah. diversity. Mm -hmm. It's all very and timely in terms of what everything else that's going on in the world. To be honest, at some point I was not really sure, like considering the questions that was in that were in the chat i was not sure if the people are like from science education or are they more like chemists i was not sure about that more chemistry yeah hmm. uh, i had a feeling you know that i i think i didn't make it on point that the research is actually done you know like with um like from chemistry education point of view and like more pedagogy and didn't make this 
No, you did a great job, Sylvia. Thanks. Yeah. And it's, huh. it's, you know, science, I think, I think your paper was the first, you know, chemistry education research paper on science capital on 4G theory. So, you know, it, it's so, it's, it's so big at the moment in science education and even science education and chemistry education, sometimes those two can be quite, you know, diverse and stuff. So I think you're really pioneering. Um, oh, it's Eshkel and Lilith, it's her topic. <laughs> well, I, I, you know, yeah, of course. Because but this um, is the part of her PhD, that's why, um, yeah. I think it's a really important um, introduction and fresh perspective into chemistry education research. So I think it'll be a really popular paper. Let's start off a lot. Louise Archer was, um, that, that, it stemmed from her work. Science education, I think, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we also had a discussion with her about it. So um, yeah, it, it's really closely related. Really? Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward I to think there are some interesting things coming up in the in the discussion on the Padlet, uh, mm. especially in the teachers. Yeah. Uh, All right, so I'll just do the minute countdown now and then uh, we've got 60 seconds and then I should better be back in the main room. Ready. <laughs> Ready. I can always tell which groups are having an in-depth discussion because they are always the last to leave. Okay. <laughs> but generally, people are people are uh, hanging on. They're clearly they're clearly um, in-depth discussion going on. The Padlet seems to be there's more and more comments coming onto the Padlet as well. That's really cool. Mm. I use it a lot like in my teaching for like feedback from the students, you know, mm -hmm. after every session, then I ask them, okay. Yeah, me too. Or something. So I've lost my breakout in the Zoom early. Um, yeah, so, so everybody should be back in the room now. So I'll pass back over to you. Okay, perfect. So, um, so thank you so much for um, participating our Padlet and participating our tool. Um, like in just before the, the coffee break starts, I would like to um, go to Padlet. Um, let me just... No, oh, okay. Can everybody hear me now? I'm not so sure about this. Mm -hmm. Sorry, that was my fault. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Okay, sorry. Okay, good. Perfect. So, um, oh, wait. I I think I'm now not sharing my screen anymore. So I'm now again sharing my screen. Okay, perfect. So, um, for us, it was really interesting to see um, your opinion or your thoughts um, because we decided to go on with this project and to see. Um, how can we use the knowledge that we get from our um, research or from our studies and to develop something more and to do something in chemistry teaching because especially when it comes to that culture issues in Germany, I can say it is very sensitive because a lot of time chemistry is um, defined equal as a religion and um, this is like let's say not really unproblematic topic to talk about um, uh, in the moment in Germany as well. So for us, it was really interesting. And we were also thinking about giving space to a knowledge diversity and widen participation. Um, so um, this is the concept that we're really looking forward to do, but we're kind of like, okay, how to do that? that? And uh, what does it exactly mean? Like, is it just, you know, how could I give space? Is it just my material or my teaching methods that the students need to use? Or is it even more? Um, what I noticed from my other studies is that, um, where is it, somebody was saying that about also about the home, about parents, because the parents do have a long, a very strong influence. I think you remember probably for one of the two, for one of the interviews when the parents, uh, when the kid was saying like, we are Christian Orthodox, we are like this and this, and this is what we think, and this is what my parents think. And sh she was kind of like switching and I didn't really know 
what to say, what is right, what does she see as right thing and so on and so on. So that means it's not enough just to, you know, make a perfect, whatever it is, um, worksheet or perfect experiment in school. It's just even more um, to have when it comes to teaching. So um, from our side, thank you very much for the information. We're going to make a PDF uh, of this Padlet and I'm going to send it to uh, Michael so he can also put it for you um, at the homepage and you have also those implications as well. If you want to discuss on this, um, please just let us know. We are always very interested in this. If you are uh, working on a similar topic or on the same topic or want to exchange the experiences, um, it would be our pleasure to talk about this. Um, so thank you very much, Lilith. Thank you so much um, to thank both Sylvia and Lilith. Um, you've done an amazing job. Oh, I really you. enjoyed that um, presentation and I'm really looking forward to seeing where um, you know you take this science capital approach um, to get us really thinking about um, diversities and inequalities and equity in chemistry. <laughs> so um, I, moving on we are going to take a breather. We're going to go for um, a quick coffee break. So 15 minutes or so. Michael is going to open up some breakout rooms because some people requested the chance to speak in small groups during the, the coffee break. So if you are assigned to a breakout room and you do want to join, um, please go ahead. Michael, is that okay? Yep, so what I'll do is I'll just put people back in the rooms they were in momentarily and um, you can join if you want. If I'll, I'll look through the room so if anybody's on their own I'll move you to another room so I'll sort of cluster people over the coffee break. So the inv invitation coming out now. All right. Okay. Coffee break. Okay, thanks. Right. Thank I'm going to leave now for my meeting but I'm going to be back. I just have to use the same link, right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Thanks so much. <laughs> Thanks. Bye. Hi, Ashley. I just want to say hi, and then I'm here and alive. <laughs> oh, you're muted. Right, Katie, Katie, Katie. I want to make you. Um, you're going to be uh, first class. So let me just put you up to first class. Have a little bit more co-host. So you can you, there can, you, go, practice, you can just practice sharing your screen. Good morning. Sorry. Good morning. Sure. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> You're fine. Ashley was muted. She was just talking, and then she was she was muted. Sorry, I'm losing track of myself here. I'm not used to mute myself. Let me just stop the oh, and then I can figure that out afterwards. Let me share the right screen.